Hi everyone, today we are going to learn about adding and subtracting rational expressions. Our essential question is how can I use factoring to find a common denominator? Let's work on these two examples first. We have some rational numbers, we want to add and subtract them. We need to keep in mind when we are adding or subtracting rational numbers, we need to have the same denominators, like the one that you see here, 9 over 2 minus 1 over 2. We have the same denominators. In order to find the answer, I'm just going to write one fraction, make one fraction here. The denominator of the answer is going to be the same thing that we have for these two. So it's 2. And the top of the fraction is going to be 9 minus 1. So whatever operation that you have here is going to be applied to the numerators. So this will be 9 minus 1, 8 over 2, which you can simplify that as 8 divided by 2 is 4. So this is the answer. In the next example, we have two fractions, but they don't have the same denominator. So what should I do in this case? I need to find the common denominator. How do I find the common denominator? By finding the least common multiple. We call that LCM, least common multiple. So we need to find the least common multiple between 3 and 9. How do I find that? You just need to list all the, all the multiples of these two numbers, like 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, times 3, 9, times 4, 12, 15, and so on. The next one is 9. 9 times 1 is 9, times 2, 18, times 3, 27, and so on. Our goal is to find the least common multiple. That means we need to find the common multiples and choose the smallest one. Now here we have 9 as the common multiple and it's already the smallest one, the smallest common multiple between these two. So this will be our common, this will be our common denominator. So our common denominator is 9. Now I'm going to change both fraction, fractions in a way that we have the same denominator. So it's going to be like this. The first one already has our common denominator, which was 9. So nothing is going to change about the first fraction. But the second one, the 3, is going to be changed as 9. How? By multiplying that by 3. So 3 times 3 is 9. Whatever I do to the denominator, I have to do the same thing to the top as well. So 2 times 3 is 6. We need to be fair with the top and the bottom. Whatever you do to the bottom, you do the same thing to the top as well. Okay, now we change two fractions in a way that we have the same denominator for both, like this one that we had. So I can find the answer easily. One fraction, keep the denominator, and do the operation on top, negative 7 plus 6, which will be negative 1 over 9. And we cannot simplify this, so this is our final answer. Now let's go to the next example. In this example, we have a rational algebraic expression. But we're going to use the same rule. If we have rational expressions, we need to have the same denominator to be able to add or subtract. And we already have that. So our denominator is 2w. 2w is our common denominator. Now simply we're going to do the operation on the numerators. 5w plus 1 minus the second one. So this will be minus the second uh, numerator minus w minus 5. Notice that this negative should be distributed to these two terms because this is minus this whole fraction, not only w. So you need to distribute the negative to both of these. Okay, so 
it's going to be 5w plus 1 minus w and minus negative 5 will be plus 5. Next, I need to find the like term and combine them. So 5w and negative w will be 4w. And 1 and 5, 1 plus 5 is 6. And denominator is 2w. Okay? The last thing that I need to do here is to simplify my fraction. So on top, we have 4w plus 6. I can factor 2 out uh, from these two. So 2 is the common factor between 4w and 6. So if I want to factor that from 4w plus 6, it's like you're dividing them by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2w, and 6 divided by 2 is 3. So we factored the top, and the bottom we had 2w, and we cannot factor this anymore. Now I can simplify the 2 from top and the bottom, cancel each other. So it will be 2w plus 3 over w. This is the simplified form of my answer. The next thing that I need to pay attention is restrictions. What are restrictions? We need to keep in mind that if we have a rational number or rational algebraic expression, the denominator should not be equal to zero. If we have something, whatever we have on top, any number or algebraic fraction, algebraic expression or whatever, divide by a zero, that is undefined. So the denominator of a rational number or rational expression cannot be equal to zero. If it's equal to zero, it's undefined. And that's something about that we don't want for our fractions. We want uh, our fraction to be defined, not undefined. So what I do here to find a restriction is to set the denominator not equal to zero and solve for the variable that we have. So here our denominator was 2w. I'm going to set this not equal to zero. Next, I'm going to solve this. Divide both sides for 2, 2. And I will have w not equal to 0 divided by 2 is 0. Notice, 0 divided by any number divided by anything is 0. But anything divided by 0 is undefined. So we found a restriction. The denominator uh, should not be equal to 0. That means by solving the denominator, that means w should not be equal to 0. This is our restriction. Now let's go to the next example. Before working on this example, I want to go back to the first example that we worked on this one. As you notice here, 3 is basically a factor of 9 because 9 is 3 times 3. And when we try to find the least common multiple between them or basically our common denominator, 9 was actually our common denominator. So what I'm trying to say is that if between two fractions, the denominator of one is basically a factor of the other one, we can take the big one, the bigger one, as our common denominator. So here, 9 was dividable by 3 because 3 was a factor of 9. So I just took the 9 as my common denominator. Now, we're going to do the same thing here. I'm trying to find the common denominator between these two. What I do here is, first of all, try to factor the, new, the denominator. 3m plus 6. What is in common between 3m plus 6? Between 3 and m, 3 is in common. So if I factor that out from 3m plus 6, I'm going to have m plus 2. Once again, let's try that 3m plus 6. If you want to factor 
3 out, it's like you're dividing these two terms by 3. 3 divided by 3 will go away, and I will have only m. And then 6 divided by 3 will be 2. So divide by 2. So m plus 2 is left. So I factored the first one, and I have 3m plus 2. And I had m on top. Next, 4m divided by m plus 2. We cannot factor m plus 2. There's nothing that I can factor out here. So I'm going to leave that like this. Now, look at the denominators that we have. One of them is m plus 2. The other one is 3 times m plus 2. As you see, m plus 2 is a factor of the other one. So I'm going to take the big one, the big denominator, as my common denominator. So my common denominator will be 3 times m plus 2. 3 times m plus 2. Okay, so how do I change the numerator? The first one is not going to change because it already had the common denominator. So it's going to be just m. The second one, we multiply the denominator by 3 to get this common denominator. So we're going to do the same thing to the top as well. So this will be 3 times 4. 12m. Okay, now we have two fractions with the same denominator. I can easily subtract these two. Keep the denominator 3m plus 2, and the top will be m minus 12m, which is m minus 12m is negative 11m over 3m plus 2. So this is our answer, and we cannot simplify this anymore, so we just keep that. Now, I need to find the restrictions. How do I find the restriction based on what we said? The denominator should not be equal to 0. So I'm going to set the denominator, which was 3m plus 2, not equal to 0. Then you divide both sides by 3 because we're trying to solve for m. It will be m plus 2 not equal to 0. 0 divided by 3 is 0. Then we subtract 2 from both sides. m will be equal to 0 minus 2, negative 2. So it should not be equal to negative 2. m should not equal to negative 2. Let me show you what happens if the m is equal to negative 2, because we said should not be equal to negative 2. What happens if it is equal to negative 2? I'm going to plug that into the first fraction that we have here. Okay, So I'm just going to write that maybe here. So if m is negative 2, the first one is going to be negative 2 over 3 times negative 2, which is negative 6 plus 6. And guess what? We have negative 2 on top and 0 in the bottom. And it's going to be undefined. We said anything divided by 0 is undefined. That's why we say m should not be equal to negative 0. Okay, so let's work on the next example here. Now, again, we want to find a common denominator between these two. What we're going to do first is to try to factor the denominators. 2m plus 2r. What is in common between them? 2. So if I factor 2 out of 2m, I will have m left. 2 out of 2r, I will have just r left here. So I factored this as 2m plus r. Top was m. And next we have 2r over m plus r. We cannot factor m plus r. Okay, so what do we have in the denominators? m plus r for one of them. For the other one, 2 times m plus r. This is a factor of the other one. So I can take the bigger one as my common denominator. So this is 2 times m plus r minus n plus r. 
to R and M here. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, the denominator for the second one will be 2 times M plus R. So what did I do to, the, to this denominator? I multiplied by 2. I'm going to do the same thing to the top as well. So this one will be 2 times 2R, which is 4R. 4R. So we found the common denominator and changed both fractions in a way that we have the same common denominator. This is what we have. Now the answer is going to be 2 times m plus r. And the top will be m minus 4r. m minus 4r. And we cannot simplify this anymore, so this is our answer. Now let's find the restrictions here. To find the restriction, we're going to set the common denominator m 2 times m plus r not equal to 0. Then you divide both sides by 2. It will be m plus r not equal to 0. And then you can subtract r from both sides. And it will be m not equal to negative r. So this is our restriction. Okay, let's go to the next example. Example 6. In order to find the common denominator between these two, once again, we're trying to factor the denominators. Um, 7w, the first one, cannot be factored anymore. How about the second one? We have 7w squared plus 21w. We need to factor this. Between 7 and 21, the common factor is 7, so they're both dividable by 7. Okay? Between w squared and w, what is in common between them? w is in common between them. So I'm going to factor 7w from these two. It's like I'm dividing each one by 7w. So 7 divided by 7 is 1. w squared by w is going to be just w. And this one, 21w divided by 7w. These two cancel each other. 21 divided by 7 is 3. So the factored form of the second fraction is 7w times w plus 3. And the first one was 7w. 3u and u is what we have. Okay. Now, what is the common denominator between these two? Again, 7w is a factor of the other denominator. So I'm going to take the bigger one as my common denominator. 7w times w plus 3 for both of them. The second fraction already had the common denominator, so nothing is going to change. But for the first one, we multiplied this one by w plus 3. So we have to do the same thing to this one as well. Multiply that by w plus 3. Multiply by w plus 3. So this will be 3u times w plus 3. Now I can distribute the 3u. It's going to be 3u w plus 3u times 3 is 9u. This is our denominator. And the second one is u over our common denominator. Now I have two fractions with the same denominator. So the answer is going to be one fraction with the common denominator that we had. And the numerator will be 
3u w plus 9u plus u. Okay, 3u w plus 9u plus u, there are like terms, it will be 10u over 7w w plus 3. And last, we just need to make sure we simplify this as much as possible. So look at the top. Is there anything that I can factor out? Yes, u is in common between the two terms. So I can factor u. It will be u times 3w. So if I factor u from 3u, w, I'm going to have 3w left. And from the second one, u will be factored and I will have 10 left. So it's 7w times w plus 3. This is our answer. The last thing is to find the restrictions. To find the restrictions, we're going to set the common denominator that we have, 7w times w plus 3, not equal to 0. Our expression is in the factored form. So to solve that, we're going to set each factor equal to 0. 7w equal to 0. Basically, not equal to 0. Then you divide both sides by 7. These two cancel. And it will be w not equal to 0. So this is our first restriction. w should not be equal to 0. The second one said the second factor not equal to zero. And you subtract three from both sides, and w is not equal to negative three. That's our second restriction. Okay, so this was our first part of the note, and uh, we're going to make another note for the second part.